In this video, I'm going to show you two ways to make Cinemagraph. Now, first of all, what is Cinemagraph? Cinemagraph has another name, it's called Parallax Effect. Essentially, you have an image, you move the image, it kind of gives an effect of live photos. Now, iPhone already included this kind of effect, but it's not as good as what I'm about to show you. So let's jump in. Oh, by the way, before I go, as I said, it's going to be in two steps or two ways. So first way will be using Da Vinci Resolve or Blackmagic Da Vinci Resolve. Go to their website and download the software. It's completely free of cost. It's unbelievable. Such an amazing software. If you don't have Da Vinci Resolve, you can actually use the exact same technique using Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro or any software that allows you to keyframe a photograph or anything. So that'll be my first step. In this video, I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. But don't worry, the free version will do exactly the same job. You will lose some functionality in the free version, but those functionality has nothing to do with this particular tutorial. So you are safe here. Now I have a folder where I going to drag and drop those photographs that you have seen in the earlier video and then i'm going to drag and drop the sunset with just davinci resolve i'm just going to make mountain and the foreground part and the second part will be with the sunset using affinity photo and davinci resolve now let's jump right in now the first stop will be drag and drop my photo of the mountain and the second stop i'm going to go quickly so that it takes, doesn't take too long to record this video. It's supposed to be quick and fast. So I'm going to make this video, make this particular clip only three seconds. I'm doing, I'm going to do exactly the same thing and drag and drop and do the same thing. If you are wondering what's happening, if you're familiar with Photoshop, this is exactly happening. So I'm going to layer one photo on top of each other and whole process will be more like Photoshop style, but in video. You will know exactly what I mean eventually. Now. As you can see that I already named my layer, which is very important to do that. Ground and mountain. So the top layer is going to be the ground, this one, and the bottom layer will be the mountain. What I'm also going to do is to color. Organizing is the key. So if you're not organized, uh, there are moments that simple thing will take longer. So my policy is to take two seconds extra to save 10 seconds. Trust me, they all add up. We are jumping into the color tab. So we were in the edit tab. Now we are going to the color tab. In color tab, we are jumping right straight into the power window, this little circle and click curve. And at this point, I don't need the note tab anymore for now. We're going to need it later. I'll tell you why and zoom in as much as you can to take the maximum benefit of your screen because you also need that. Now, what do you do? You separate the foreground and there are no specific rule. You have to make sure that the most strongest contrasty area is separated from the top soft area. Everything depends photograph to photograph, but the general rule is you always should separate the strongest part with the softer part. What I mean by that, you always separate them by color or by contrast. So I'm just gonna jump straight there because you don't necessarily have to be perfect. You know why? Because essentially your photo is going to move, right? Which means that you're gonna have very little time to pay attention to the little micro mistakes because they are not going to be noticeable unless you are doing some commercial work that's another story obviously you need to spend some more time to refine it but if you're going for social media with your personal project or even commercial personal project believe me uh, even the expert eye will not see the little mistakes now we are done what else I recommend you to do is to add some softness. The reason why you do softness is because the edges are not going to be too sharp. You're going to have like a nice little uh, flow. Now we are going to turn on the note tab. This is also another important part. Here you're going to right click, add alpha output. So you connect those two. So essentially you are going to add some, uh, separate them, make them invisible i think i added too much softness so i'm gonna go back in the outside zone bring it down to i recommend you to stay between 10 to 15. i think that's the most ideal in my experience experiment it worked now we are heading straight to the tab node the edit edit tab now 
If you want to see what happened right now, you can turn off the bottom, the mountain, and you can see that only thing left is the ground. Now, our step number one, this is where the game fun time begin. So you select the top green layer, go to the inspector. In the inspector, I have a general rule. First of all, I always zoom in both of them into 1.080. The reason why, because your photograph can be in 4x3 mode, not necessarily HD 1080. So um, you need to stretch them a little bit just to make sure that you don't have any empty space. So I zoom in just a touch to make sure that everything is nice and uh, nice and there's no empty space. Now we have done that. So I'm gonna select back the green. We are gonna go at the very beginning of the clip. Then we are gonna go back to the inspector, select this button next to transform. Now we want our ground to be zooming in to out. What I mean, we're going to begin this part that I say the ideally not too zoomed in. I think one point 240 is the best so the best one is to I, I like typing them because you know the micro movement can make a big difference so i like to type them easier at least for me now we are zooming in and we're gonna go back go at the end of the clip and zoom backward backward to where we were 1080 so check this out we already did something amazing you can clearly see that it's already going to be amazing but we're gonna make it better so we are going back to the beginning of this clip. Go to the pitch and we're gonna stretch a little bit. I say 100.124, that's about there. And then go at the end of it and then pull it back. Pull it back, but not all the way, just a little bit. You don't have to be perfect, I'm telling you. Now check it out. Without even changing the mountain, ho ho ho. Come on guys, it's already amazing. I think you can even Stop right there and then post it already. I mean, this is already amazing, but we are here for the perfection. So you're gonna go to the bottom, to the mountain layer now. Do exactly the same, but opposite. At the beginning, we went from zoomed in to zoom out. Now you're gonna go to the zoom out to zoom in. What I mean, we're gonna keep it as it is, 1080, right? At the end, we're gonna do opposite of what I did earlier. So we go to just a little bit. This time I'm gonna zoom a little bit more. Check this out. This is where I made a mistake. So I zoomed in, but I forgot to click transform. So we're gonna do and go back and go backward. But now I think we'll be fine. Ho! Oh. You see what happened? You can. This is just amazing. I'm going to stop complimenting myself a lot now. Like I said, we need to make it perfect. To make it perfect in the pitch section, we are going to pitch then minus, I said about 200, not too much, but 200, that should do. You know what? I think this is fine already. Now we will go at the beginning and then bring it back. We're gonna bring it back. Bring it back where it was. Let's say you're gonna go to the zero. I think it's fine. I think that should do. One thing I like to do here, I can see the difference. There is a little movement there, which I don't like. So I'm gonna, bring it pull it down a little bit just 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 a little bit not too much and at the end let's see if it anything happening let's see oh no that's fine all right this is the moment of truth let's see what's happening this is going to be the final result zero one two three go boom now this is how you do everything just in DaVinci Resolve. Now, the next step will be using Affinity Photo and DaVinci Resolve so that I, I imagine that you don't have DaVinci Resolve but you have just a basic editor which allows you to do some keyframe. So as long as you have a video editor which allows you to do keyframing, you can download GIMP, Affinity Photo or Photoshop in order to do our next step. Let's jump in. Now, You've seen the first step, or first way. The so second way is divided into two steps. Step number one, using separating the photo in Affinity Photo, and then bring it over to any of the photo video editor that you have and keyframe. Anyway, I'm just going to show you right now, it's better that way. Anyway, moving on to the Affinity Photo. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to use the, the sunset, the second one. The reason why I'm doing that 
doing two photos in two different way because using the same photo for two different tutorials are kind of boring and second you kind of see the difference like uh, what kind of photos you can use to have this kind of effect so you have two different examples one with the sunset one with the mountain and the foreground now i'm going to go click open go to the folder that i have the photograph I'm using that. I could have actually load the photo in advance anyway, but I'm showing you from the beginning because let's say you have the affinity photo or you don't. Um, you can actually see how you can use affinity photo anyway. So it's like a two in one tutorial. Now I'm going to open up the sunset. Similar to the mountain one, I'm going to split. And this one is particularly easy. At least I find particularly easy. What I mean, I'm just going to open the metadata. I don't like showing the brand names um what i mean that you just have water the ocean and everything else the sun the cloud and the sky basically the horizon and water basically straightforward it's fantastic so i'm gonna go to the tool that it call is i mean i have many tools the like free hand selection tool row marquee column um the round tool basically you can uh, select anything round or rectangle marquee tool which is essentially you can select a certain area and uh, delete it or copy and paste it a uh, very useful tool to get rid of backgrounds or move stuff but before i go do so i'm going to press ctrl J. I think in Mac is Command J in order to duplicate. Um, it's really important because it's kind of non-destructive. And I'm going to do twice. And this one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down uh, Horizon with H H O R, pretty easy. And the second one, I'm going to click Water and by doing so it's easy for me to actually um, you know make sure that nothing is mixed up now second step would be fixing the location now i can zoom in a little bit to make sure that um, i can see everything clearly uh, and then i'm going to go to the water and I don't need to be, again, like the last time, you don't need to be exactly 100% perfect. Close enough is good. And then I'm going to select as much as I can, drag it over. And then release the mouse. In that case, I don't really have a mouse anyway. I'm using the touchpad, which is not very, you know, ideal. But I have it. I'm going to have to live with it. Now, before I... Um, split that I'm going to right click and raster if we don't actually we you're going to every time you click delete uh, it's going to delete the whole photograph so first of all I'm going to go to the water and invert this is this in the selection you have the invert beam and press delete now you may probably not seeing it what happened but i'm going to turn up the bottom layer now you can see that what i did easy no now what i'm going to do i'm going to click invert again go to the bottom layer and press delete one more time so i have you can see even here what you did you have the horizon and you have the sky and you have the complete photo i don't need that anymore but i can you can see that if i turn off and on there you go that's your water and that's your horizon so i'm going to click exit to get rid of all both of them now what i'm going to do i'm going to export both of them individually now i'm going to save you some time but i'm going to show you you can go to the file and press export individually like of course you have to turn this on off um, turn off and then export the water and then turn on and turn off the other one and export the horizon now in which resolve i'm going to drag first the sunset the horizon and then the water 
after this is actually exactly the same thing we have we have done earlier with the mountain and the horizon basically you're gonna follow the exact same step because you've done your half part uh, in affinity photo or your choice of image manipulation software again i'm going to remind you why we're doing this one this one because i'm imagining that you don't have any of the high-end software such as DaVinci resolve or uh, adobe premiere pro or final cut pro you have something that does basic zoom in zoom out like you can do here for instance you can do in on the side like zooming in zooming out or cropping or uh, pan and pitch and etc so if you have any image editing software allows you to keyframe you are you are all set so i'm just going to show you the first one what we did that's the mountain one that we did earlier so we're gonna do exact same but the mountain one the 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 the, the mountain it came from back to front so it's basically zoomed out to zoom in so we're gonna inverse it to diversify the whole thing now we are going to pull all those photos that we created in affinity photo in the timeline now i'm going to put the water just like the mountain like in the mountain we did the ground at the bottom as you can clearly see we named it this is why we name it people it's really really important you name everything not to get confused because it takes about few seconds original footage is few seconds but so much work behind it organizing is the key and same Again, if you're confident, you can not, you choose not to color it, but I'm gonna color it just to make sure that I'm um, doing the right thing. And same way, the first footage of the photo was a three second clip. We're going to do a same three seconds. So I'm gonna stop at six seconds because the whole footage is going to be a six second awesomeness. Oh, did you like it? Anyway, I should stop. Now, this is where the fun time began, just like the before. We're going to do exact opposite of what we did with the sky of the mountain or the ground of the mountain. Basically, we do exact opposite of everything we did with the mountain and the ground. Now, at the in the water, we're going to zoom in a little bit. In fact, we're going to zoom in both at one zero two zero. Same with the floor, other one one zero two zero. Let's see. It's good, even though I cropped, this is looks like a 1080 photograph, but you always want to be in a safe side. You know, it's better to be safe. Anyway, now going back to the water, the water, like I said, we're gonna do opposite of what we did with the ground of the mountain. So we're gonna begin at where we were, 1020, start a keyframe. Now with the pitch, this is where another interesting thing, we're gonna, keep the pitch as at zero or maybe you can choose to just pull it a little bit because you did that there's a little black area created you can pull it up using position now head to the end in the end you're gonna zoom in quite a bit now right there looks about right now we're gonna pull it up just to touch it then the pitch we're gonna go to about i don't know 120 we're gonna stretch it as much as you can minus 120 i Yeah, that should do. Now, we're gonna we're gonna do a test test run. Let's see what it gives us. It looks like the water is going up. I don't like it. What if I change the pitch to exact opposite of 120 instead of minus? We're gonna go plus. Let's see the result, and then pull it up a little bit. Looks like it is a little bit back, and then much 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 better you have a lot more strong visual movement right there so we did quite well with the water so for the sun sky part i'm going to do exact opposite of what i did with the water i'm gonna go all the way to 1.3 like stretch quite significantly right and then the pitch will be let's say about 300 i'm sorry minus 300 we're gonna stretch quite a bit 
Now you've done it, right? So you always keyframe it. When you do keyframe it, you go at the end of it. So when you change it, it will keyframe automatically. So you don't need to worry about it. So you always make sure you do the keyframing first. Now we're gonna go back to where it was, about 1.3. See the gap there? It's gonna be fine when you change the pitch, which is this one. I'm gonna stop as long as it looks good. There are no practical rule. Now I'm kind of nervous. Let's see what's the result. I'm hoping it to be amazing. So, yes, this is it. So let's start everything from the very beginning. So the first turn we did everything with the DaVinci Resolve. And the second one, we split the tux in two different software with the image manipulation software to separate it and then brought it over to the DaVinci Resolve. Now, three, two, one, rock and roll. Yes. You see six seconds of clip, but it took about 20 to 25 minutes. I mean, more you do, better you get at it. I had to stop, take a pause to show you. If I was doing it for myself, I would have taken about 50% of the time. So organizing is the key. And if you have to write down certain things, you write down in a piece of paper before you're changing stuff on your computer. So much better when you do that way. Trust me. And if you wondering to have this kind of photograph, go down to the description below. I don't have exact same photograph that I use for this particular tutorial. However, there is a link of pixel.com, which is like a, one of those websites where you can download royalty free photograph in order to practice. I don't have any affiliation with them. So feel free to go down. I have some of my own photographs. If you want to download them, if you find them useful, of course um, and then use the search box to find similar photograph in order to practice and have fun with it see now you're better than you were before i told you that would be easy so if you found this video very useful please like and subscribe and go down to description and see all the links that i have available if you're really interested and i see you in the next video take care of yourself bye bye